Welcome again to another episode of the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. And my girlfriend is still off on photography assignment. So hopefully we'll be seeing her probably, you know, for probably around Thanksgiving-ish. She's really busy. Fortunately, I'm semi-busy. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone, because I know everyone out there is also busy, and you do spend some time and you watch my show. Thank you guys very much. Please like, continue to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And tonight we're going to talk about, again, two things, because it's Tuesday. It's a two for Tuesday. So we're going to talk about SmackDown Live. Take a little break, break, break. And talk some mixed match challenge. And this is oh, um, let's start off with again because I think WWE mentioned it so much. Unleash the big dog. All of our thoughts and prayers are right now with John. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his first name. Or um, Joseph Anoyai. Stay strong, and remember, you are the big dog, and you have the whole WWE universe behind you. And if you do not know, Roman Reigns came on. I mentioned this in my past show. Um, he is going through leukemia. So it's, it's kind of a downer, but again, we want to give him all the, all the emotional support, or all the emotional support a hobo could give a guy. I'm still not giving up my aluminum, though. So it's mine. I hobo for that. Again, he gets my thoughts and prayers, though, as I do go about hoboing. Well, I still have to clean up my office. Man. <laughs> so let's talk about some SmackDown first. So the New Day come out as a very quick recap about losing, and they were so shocked that the Big Show came out to help the bar. Then the bar comes out, and they're trying to figure out who's going to score off against Kofi Kingston. The Big Show comes out. Or I, or I think it's actually the New Day that want their rematch, and really it's just the New Day versus Big Show. Um, for the most part, it's really just a glorified squash match until the new, until the whole New Day get involved, and then of course the whole New Day get involved, the whole bar must get involved. And it was, it was okay. I mean, the Big Show, he he looks in a lot better shape. Seems to be enjoying himself. Um, I know C Cesaro. I keep on calling him Caesar. Cesaro and Sheamus again did the little pointy thing, and this time there was that little space between the two. And of course, the Big Show comes up. Oh, lag issues. That's weird. Can't move too fast for this video camera. The computer is actually um. Pretty we, well, I should start deleting some files. But besides that, my own issues. Um, again, it was a glorified squash match. Anytime you're involved in a squash match, even if it's one person taking out three, it's a ham sandwich match. So with that being said, let's go on to our second match of the evening. And this was actually a really wrestling-filled card. Um, it was a good, it was a fun show. Not up to the standards quite of what SmackDown was, or, or what's, what it's been at least. Um, we have the Usos versus AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. And... And actually paying attention to the entrances. I know Daniel Bryan is from the state of Washington. I always thought he was Bill out of Seattle. But I guess he's out of Aberdeen, Washington. That made me think, I'm like, wait a second. There's one other person that I've heard of being from Washington. Is it Aberdeen, Washington? I don't know. But I always want to give a shout out 
to Princess Kimberly. She's my princess. So again, this was a fun match. AJ, AJ and Daniel Bryan, for the most part, were on the same page for the first half of the match. Then again, things broke down. AJ Styles is, is, can still be anyone's tag team partner. I mean, he can still, again, bring a mop to a ham sandwich match. He could have a ham sandwich match against my cat. He could have a ham sandwich match against me. That's how good he is. Daniel Bryan, he can give my cat a can of soup match. Probably me a ham sandwich match. And he, he's still good. <sighs> Talking about... I guess tier one AJ Styles, and then just right beneath him, and the two, second tier would be Daniel Bryan. I mean, not that not that far removed. Um, now, so for this time, of course, the Usos are are amazing tag team specialists, but but now it's AJ's turn to to kind of make the mistake and and kick Daniel Bryan in the face. And I think it was done with a Pele kick. Because AJ did stop himself from using the phenomenal forearm when the Uso tried to get Daniel Bryan away. Or use Daniel Bryan. Said Daniel Bryan reversed it. And AJ Styles went for a Pele kick, but then the Uso reversed that. And of course that cost AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan the win. I mean, it was it was a it was a fun enough match. I mean, it's a rematch, and the idea of all these rematches are getting kind of old. So, I'll be fair and say it's a cheeseburger match. I mean, again, it kind of sets things up. And I'm not too sure if this match is going to happen at Crown Jewel. I know amid the internet there are rumors, I don't know how, how true it is, that John Cena and Daniel Bryan might be sitting out at the Crown Jewel. If they are, power to them. If not, I can't blame them for, for, for saying, I'll take, the, I'll take the money. Again, Daniel Bryan... There was an interview he did try to give the too sweet. And AJ Styles just should have had the good brother club smack him around. Then we get to the sharp <laughs> Evil Becky. Evil Becky. So good. The, the Evil Becky episode. When Charlotte is at the Performance Center and you kind of know something's up because... Everyone except for the, the, the trainers and staff are really paying attention to Charlotte. Even MJ Jane. Yeah. Maybe. I forget what her name is now. I do have a selfie of her. I will post that selfie eventually. Maybe that will be my evolution thumbnail. Hmm. That sounds good. But uh, Sarah Del Rey just has the biggest <laughs> I know it's going to happen smile. It's like, I don't think I could even get my face to make the smile that she had. It literally just took up her entire face. And she kept that smile on the whole time. And of course, Becky jumped Charlotte. Charles like, I guess for the, for for this episode she's like, why? That's where we are. It's like truly evil now. Yes, Becky Evil is best. Becky Lynch. She's hot. Becky Lynch. Evil Becky is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that was that. Then we have um, Rusev, and Rusev seems to be enjoying himself. I think he's happy that uh, Rusev's day is going over. I think he's really happy that he's doing things again with his wife, Lana. 
needs to realize that she's Russian she's on TV. But it was Rusev versus Aiden English. It was a fun match. I mean, Aiden English did kind of the classic heel things. Um, again, staring down Lana, going after the legs of the bigger and much more stronger Rusev. Rusev, again, a big, more powerful, brutish wrestler. Um, and, and this was a f actually a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then Rusev went over, he made Aiden English submit and tap out to the accolade, which I don't know if this is going to end this feud. I'd like to see this feud continue a little bit more. I don't know what else they would have Aiden English do. Besides, get to, besides bring Simon Gotch, come the five villains and tie a lot of to, to a railroad trestle rail. <laughs> that would be old timey vaude villains. <laughs> that would actually be really funny to make a picture of. Then we have, of course, one of my favorite segments Ms. TV. And this time his guest was Ray Mysterio Jr. Um, Ms. just calls Ray Mysterio. It's like, oh, why are you back? Oh, because you're the little engine that could. I mean, again. Rey Mysterio Jr. has always been that underdog. I think my only thing with Rey Mysterio, first of all, he looks in amazing shape. I mean, he does things that I still could never do, even when I was in shape. When I was 20... What was I my best? Three. Yeah, probably when I was 25 to 28, I was in the best shape of my life, and I still couldn't do Rey Mysterio stuff. Um, Ray thought he was going to be on True TV. Um, my own thing is that Ray, I think, looks better with the, the full lucha mask, having just the back of his head show. Ah, it's his preference. So be it. Then you have an evolution promo. It's going to be so long. But I do have the day off, though. So I'll make myself a yummy. What did I have last time? Wait, what did I watch last time? Oh yeah, it was um two weeks ago. It was Bound for Glory. I think, I think on Sunday I'm gonna make myself. Ooh, or should I make that instead? It's gonna be some form of breakfast burrito, and it just might be an extra cheesy bacony breakfast burritos. Extra cheese and extra bacon with bacon, egg, and cheese and potato burritos. That sounds good. I'll have to get orange soda. And I'm off Sunday. That means it can be orange soda. Ooh, Malibu. Right, that's my part of my hurricane supply. But we didn't get hit, hit by any hurricane. I wanted to make my bourbon cheesecake again. But that's a whole other issue. Um, so again, this leads to a match between The Miz and Rey Mysterio. This was amazing. The Miz is, is so good. He's buying kind of real expectations. Um, I remembered him a little bit. And, and he was always okay. He... He's become so much better at talking on the mic. He's so good as a heel. I mean, the fact that he can do what he can do, I mean, he makes no qualms about it. He, he does wrestle a safe style. He has a very mat based probably better phrases to put it would be a mat based style. And again, that's a great contrasting style, especially when you think about the, the Lucha background that Rey Mysterio has, being the much faster, quicker, the Miz is more methodical, uh, much more the ring technician than Rey Mysterio is. Don't get me wrong, Rey Mysterio Jr. is still amazing in the ring. But, I mean, he, he has his high spots. He, every so often he pulls off some new moves. I think it would be really fun to see Rey Mysterio versus Andrade Cien Almas. I think just because of, of their shared background, 
that could be an amazing match. That sh that should have been a qualifier for the crown jewel. Best superstar in the world. Best superstar period. Because again, if they're gonna have the best superstar in the world, somehow you have the one American Kurt Angle. So there's eight all. So you have one American Kurt Angle. You have Drew McIntyre. Then you would have Rey Mysterio, Jinder Mahal. That's four. I know Jinder Mahal is, I'll, I'll say his, he's from India, even though he's Canadian. Who's a Canadian wrestler? I would have said Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn could come back. He's from Canada. So again, you have American, United Kingdom, Spain, Canada. Who else is from some ethnic? Place. Oh, you could have um, Buddy Murphy from Australia, and then who else would there be? Two more. I, mean, I guess he, I guess if you could say um. United Kingdom, and then you could have Seamus or, 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 or Finn Balor from Ireland. That's separate. And then, and then Cesaro from, from, Swe from Sweden. Or oh, Switzerland, I'm sorry. So again, that would, that would be my crown jewel, or something like it. At least you have... Makes it more worldwide, I guess. But, that, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Miz Tease at the top rope skull crusher. And I'm just like, whoa. Again, any time a wrestler pulls out some very some new variation or something different out of their bag of tricks. I like that. And no matter what happens, I mean the fact that these two had an amazing match, I mean a good back and forth, the great false finishes. Miz really looked frustrated. This was a surf and turf match. Rey Mysterio did get over with the win. Um, he did eventually hit a and, and, and a frog splash. Again, it was fun. It was a really good surf and turf quality match. Then, the heck? Oh, that's not the divider. Then you had uh, Naomi and Asuka versus Sonya Deville. Boo, boo, Sonya Deville. And Mandy Rose. And then everyone just, uh, the whole women's locker room comes out. And just start, this is Shmaz. Um, They did say Molly Holly's going to be at this Royal Rumble. I mean, Molly Holly in a while. Molly Holly was always a cute looking wrestler, too. Not, not the hottest, not the frumpiest, but they're kind of like the cutest, though. Uh, so this turned into a big Shmaz. And then Asuka stood tall. Ugh. Wednesday, I'll be making, probably tomorrow, I'll be making some predictions about wrestling and stuff, about evolution. I have to figure out what the card is. Again, this is going to be one of those long events where I do so because of you and you and all of you out there. So you can hear my opinions, and of course, you can also voice your opinions by, by leaving a comment or even an email. So I didn't even rate that, only because it was your smalls. And Shane McMahon comes out, introduces Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton, talks again, talks up more of Crown Jewel. Doesn't mention really where it's from. Oh, my hair's a mess. Mainly because I, I went to the pool yesterday. Bade. Hobo bath. And it was uh, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. 
And I thought this feud was over. I mean, still really. <laughs> when Shane McMahon was talking, there were CM Punk chants. Only for McMahon, I guess. Um, and then I thought this was over. This feud, but who knows. I'm actually surprised that Shinsuke Nakamura didn't impose himself. At least that would have made some sense. And say, so Randy Orton was playing mind games with Shinsuke Nakamura. Now it's Shinsuke Nakamura's turn to play mind games with Randy Orton. So that would have made sense. Again, this was really good. This was really brutal in some spots. Um, Orton was still going after the ear. Which still makes grown people cringe. He just got the beginning of the match, near the beginning of the match, he just got Jeff Hardy on the outside. Started to bang the back of his head against the steel steps. That was an amazing visual, amazing sound too. Jeff Hardy sold it like like a champ. Like if you got your head rung against the steel steps, you'd be woozy too for a long time. Um, again, there was a table spot. Again, just on the apron. There was even obsolete. Oh no, wait, wrong one. Obsolete, obsolete reference by Corey Graves and table spots, and it was just really fun. Um, Orton went over again, and this was a fun match. It had a lot of good, good aspects to it. I mean, nothing really bad. I mean, it was fun too. So that makes it a surf and turf quality match. And for the most part, that was SmackDown. Again, it was a really fun show. A lot of wrestling. Got every, got really everyone who needed to be involved, involved. And that was fun. So now let's take a little break, break, break. Whoa, that break was... It's perfectly timed. And there we go. My video is back up to sync. Makes me happy. I just can't move way too fast. So now let's talk about something else which is amazingly even more fun than SmackDown. And that's the Mixed Match Challenge. And uh, they just seem to be having fun. I mean, it just really seems like a house show. I mean... I think most of my notes are the interaction really before the match even happens or just the antics during the match. So for the first match of the evening, for the mixed match challenge, you have B and B, which is Finn Balor and Bailey versus Team Paws, I guess. Which is Natalia and the glorious Bobby Roode. And I think he's just so happy that he's not being fed the glorious line. He doesn't have to smile, and he's teasing a little heel stuff, which is fun. Um, Natalia came out in like a black purple robe. Again, it's her colors, but Bobby Roode's robe. That was funny. Um, when Finn and Bailey came out, they were woo woo too sweet, woo woo too sweet. Um, I'm Natty. I mean, they're so nice and fun with each other. Um, Natalia gave Bailey her cat ears. Um, <laughs> of course, Finn Balor paid his leather jacket for one of Bobby Rube's glorious robes. And we had a glorious Balor and The keeping it real, Demon Bobby Rude. And the, the funny thing is, Rude is a, a bigger man than Finn. Um, that probably sounds bad, but it's not. I mean, he's just physically bigger. He has, he probably has a little bit more muscle than Finn, only because of his frame size. Finn's just, just much more cut up. So Finn would be much more ripped 
But Bobby Roode definitely has a size, and, and Bobby Roode cannot get that jacket on, nor could he get it off. So, so again, Bobby Roode just doing the, the too sweet. Is this how you do it? And like too sweet him right on the forehead. And then, of course, Finn Balor. Is this how it's done? Is this how it's done? Glorious! So that was fun. That was a fun beginning. Um, Finn and Rude tried to start off the match. Bobby Rude couldn't get out of the jacket, so he goes over tags. Thanks, Natalia. The Bailey, they busted out with the Bailey song. Hey, Bailey. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Will you be my girl? Hey, Bailey. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Will you be my girl? Well, I can't say that because I already have a girlfriend. So no, Bailey, you cannot be my girl. I told you that myself. My name is Hobo Tom. Um, yeah, jacket's too small. Um, again, Natalia and Bailey. I mean, very strong, very technical wrestling match. I mean, Natty teases. He, yeah, he has Natalia help him out of the jacket. <laughs> Natalia can't do that. And we're like, no, don't rip it. Um, again, they had like a, a a double fake handshake, and they did like the same thing. It was a handshake, and then it would be a schoolboy takedown for a false for for a pin attempt. Then Bailey did the same thing to Natalia. <sighs> you don't. Oh, they said they were the, the announcers were going crazy. Oh, that's right. Natalia was going to do to a dive. <laughs> Bobby Roode line tags her. She's like, "What are you doing?" It's like, "You don't dive. I'm saving you from yourself." <laughs> this is really fun. Um, but again. Bailey again. Rude's very opportunistic. I mean, Bailey's just just way too happy to be in there. And Rude tries to the coup de gras. Of course, he put on the Finn Balor jacket, so he thinks he's Finn Balor. He missed. He missed that. Eventually, Finn gets the coup de gras on Rude, and this was a really fun match. I mean, one of the things is that the wrestlers seem really to be having fun. It's Catch as catch can almost wrestling like like anything you can do I can I can do better and make it funner. So again, this was a surf and turf quality match. And then the second match of the evening, your team Asuka, which comprised of course Asuka and the Miz versus Day One Glow. Which is Naomi and Jimmy Uso, and I again like to give some props to Jimmy Uso. I know he is related to Roman Reigns. Um, he just seems to be in good spirits, and even though members of leukemia, and again I will dedicate this very quick thing to Roman Reigns. Again, unleash the big dog. Um, Jay Uso and or is it Jimmy Uso? I think it's Jimmy Uso. I always get the two of them. And I mean, they, they seem to be in good spirits. Um, as the match starts, the Miz is still a heel. He's not going to get cheered for anything. Um, again, they tried. He would point to Oscar. They'd see. They'd cheer for her. Um, he points himself. They would boo him. Then he would tease it, and then they they cheered. It was like, ah, you bunch of dummies. I mean, it was really fun. Um, Naomi comes out. <laughs> she has an amazing glowing fur coat. There was no dance off, which was kind of sad because I know Naomi's a really good dancer. I'm sure Jimmy could bust out some moves. Oscar would just be 
fun to watch. And, and the Miz, of course, is is, is the poo pooer of things. Um, I was gonna, my, my, <laughs> the funny thing about this match is that it did try to have a hug off. Um, Asuka and Naomi really didn't want. First of all, they didn't take their shirts off, so I knew they they weren't going to be serious about anything. Because generally, that's like a kind of thing. If wrestlers don't take off their own merch, especially if it's a shirt, you know, it's not going to be serious about anything. You know, every thought of that this is an athletic endeavor goes out the window, and it's just fun. Um, then. <laughs> Asuka and Naomi hug each other. And that's like kind of that fuzzy feel-good movement. So then Jimmy Uso hugs, of course, his wife. Naomi, I had to think about that for a second. And Jimmy and Uso also hugs Asuka. And then Miz and Asuka's like, to, to the Miz for a hug. And <laughs> Miz has a great line. You don't hug. There's no hugging in wrestling. And at first, because <laughs> this was a hug off. And the Miz just kind of escapes the ring. That's the end of that. You have to praise the Miz so much for his comedic timing, his comedic chops, the way he carries himself in the ring, the way he can talk, and the way he re passes on, relays his message to the crowd. And for some reason, the Mixed Match Challenge is just filmed differently, too. So you can really hear what the rest of those saying. But sometimes you don't want to, though. It's like, okay, Asuka's going over. Bring it home. You don't want to really hear that stuff. But again, you have, you have a hug out. <laughs> oh, um, Corey Graves, whoever Vic is, uh, um, I, I forget his first name. But he says, Vic, if, if you give me a hug, you, you're gonna get some. You're gonna get. You're gonna get some. And of course, the Miz he gets in the back of the ring. I'll hug myself. Um, again, it's just some it was just good stuff. Um, again, the Miz did the Miz thing, put Oscar in the way of Naomi when she did a suicide dive. She kind of teases a little bit of frustration that Oscar has. Well, Miz did get the pin. Um, he hit the skull crashing finale on Jimmy Uso. And again, this was just fun. This is a surf and turf match. So, with that, I mean, the mixed match challenge was actually better than SmackDown. Um, so, that was good stuff. Um, just a couple of programming notes, probably sometime tomorrow, maybe tomorrow night. I shall list my predictions, my girlfriends and I predictions about evolution. Um, again, probably Friday, I'll put up my Lucha Underground. Again, I'm still on my 90 day internet ban, so Sunday is going to be a review and kind of recap. Of evolution, I'll go and try to put that up Sunday night because I'll watch that Sunday. You probably put that up Sunday night. Nah, uh, Monday I'm doing too much stuff. Monday, Monday is going to be again your Raw. Tuesdays the SmackDown followed by a mixed match challenge. I guess they are having Survivor Series, so I, I'm not sure what the matches are going to be for a Survivor Series. And then on Halloween, Wednesday the 31st, and we're going to have a special show. We're going to have, presented by WWE 2K17, we're going to have the most evil wrestler, the most evil male superstar. We have probably a ladder match or four way. Five way. We're going to have some kind of elimination match. Determine who's the most evil. And I want to say, it's, I know it's going to be the four. It's going to be the Undertaker. It was the powers of darkness. Kane, again, who set his brother on fire once. Ray Wyatt, because he just seems like that cult leader. And of course, you're going to have 
evil town. Then we're going to have. I don't have any. Ooh, maybe I'll make a good versus evil match. Maybe, maybe a woman's tag team good versus evil. It'll be Gigi, Heather, and Princess Ikuchi versus La Generica. Oh, I know. Oh, it's going to be even better. It's going to be um, Gigi, Heather, and Princess Ikuchi versus Mistress Heather, mystery partner. Ooh. That would actually sound pretty good. Then we're going to have... Now let's see if I can do this. A revenge backstage brawl between the Cuba Connection and the Lucha Dragons. Because remember, the, the Cuba Connection lost a chance for the for the tag team belts. They gave it some ridiculous name. International Openweight Lucha Tag Team Champions. Or I forget what it is. So again, we'll have that, all that show coming up soon as well. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, unleash the big dog. Everyone have a good night. I'll see everyone again Wednesday. Again, if you also want to leave your, your predictions, please feel free to leave a comment. Or you can even email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Thanks. Bye.